Project Zomboid is a game that famously takes place in the state of Kentucky. But did you know that there's an official tropical island map for the game? It's hidden behind a challenge wall, but the name is called Kingsmouth Island, a Caribbean resort boasting some quaint shops, a military airbase, and lastly, a massive resort. So I thought today why not visit this nice place and take a vacation, but in order to make it truly a vacation, the number of zombies is gonna be a problem. So before I can enjoy that, I want to see if I can kill every single zombie on the King's Mouth Island map. So let's see how this goes. It seems like Claudette just can't catch a break, even while living on an island resort as this island is filled with zombies. Now that's not gonna stop Claudette from having a vacation, but one thing is for sure, we're gonna have to kill every single zombie here in order to enjoy our vacation. So welcome everyone to a new challenge for Project Zomboid, which should hopefully be a nice change of pace compared to my previous hunted challenge and the future one I have cooking up. I don't want to say too much, but it is probably going to be brutal. But yes, we are back with Claudette, which means we are going to have to kill every single zombie. And speaking about zombies, I already hear a couple at my window. Who is down here now again? Oh, you. Hello. <laughs> it looks like we got our first victim. Oh man, it feels good to be back. But yeah, this is going to be one of many zombies that we're going to have to kill on the island. So let me pop up my map and actually show you what we're dealing with. As you see, Kingsmouth is not a large map. Matter of fact, it is one of the smaller maps boasting a small neighborhood, a massive resort, and a nice military base. Now don't let the size fool you. This place is filled with zombies particularly this resort down here, which I think is the most populated building in the entire game's history, vanilla-wise that is. So yeah, we are gonna need a lot of prep time to actually kill every single zombie here, but with Claudette and her skill set, I think that should be no problem. But right now, I don't care about looting that resort because I need some basic supplies, such as food, water, and more importantly, weapons. So let's see what we have around this house and I can kind of fill you in on my whole plan afterwards. In which we have a couple of useless books, a fresh orange soda which I can use as a water bottle with some food, a nice saucepan for a weapon, and lastly we have even more books. Man, Claudette is a very well-read individual, but yeah, uh, we need a plan in order to do this right, because if I were to go to the resort right now, that would end terribly. But we're gonna save our true laid out plans for a little bit, up until I can get some extra supplies. Having a weapon and some food is nice, but we need more. So right now, we're gonna go head outside, scream a little bit, kill all of the zombies in the area and see where we can go from there, looting each of the homes while avoiding the big one. Oh, and one last thing, I did bring back our mini map, so killing zombies is gonna be easy. And as you see, there are quite a few zombies for this small area that I'm gonna go kill, honestly, right now. <laughs> Despite only having a saucepan, Claudette would be able to clear out this neighborhood easily. So let's go do just that. Using our fence line right here to easily kill every single one of these idiots. Let's see what they got. And with that, we should be able to loot the neighborhood just a tiny bit easier. Though I am hoping that all of the other bedrooms in the other homes aren't just filled with books like Claudette's vacation home. But yes, we do need a few more things. And the number one thing I need right now is a pen so I can really show you guys what I'm going to be doing for this challenge. Overall, there's not too many zombies around the area and we actually cleared out the nearby homes pretty easily. So let's see what this house has down here and slowly work our way this direction. By the way, I absolutely love this map as small as it is with how luxurious these homes look. I mean, come on, every single house here has like a little mini pool slash hot tub thing. It's pretty rad and you can even drink tainted water out of it. But instead of focusing on the pools, let's focus on the indoors in which we have more books. This is starting to become a trend. More orange sodas 
and another couple books on top of that, and it looks like my theory was correct, so that's a bit of a problem. So with that conclusion, we will just head further down south this way, fighting any zombies along the way. But I will say mass zombie extermination isn't our number one priority, at least right now, because all Claudette is armed with right now is a single saucepan, which really isn't the best for mass murder. We need guns for that. And in order to get guns, we are going to need to move out of this pretty affluent neighborhood. But of course, I'm going to have to fight my way out and hopefully find myself a pen to truly become organized. And on top of that, it looks like we have found ourselves a good old fashioned digital watch to tell what time it is. But yeah, we need to find a pen and the best chance of finding one is going to be in a trash can or on a zombie. So I'll keep my eyes peeled and slowly work my way down this way looting any homes I come across as well. Woo wee what a workout! And you want to know the best part? None of- Oh, ooh, actually a zombie does have a pen. So that's one less thing to worry about. My saucepan did break though, so I am out of a weapon. It's a good thing we are right next to a house with a new potential one. And while I'm inside there, I can finally describe my plan for this small, little, humble, happy island. See you later, chuckle nuts. Bam. Time to see what this idiot has in his house. More books. Of course it is. Wow, books are very popular here. Thankfully, it looks like saucepans are also popular here. <laughs> I'm also going to take the non-perishable food, and with that, I can finally write down on the map our plan, which involves three steps. And in three steps, I mean three quadrants. And as it stands right now, Claudette is in Quadrant 3. Also, I hear the bushes moving outside, so I'm going to pause the game. Quadrant 3 is the most dangerous because it has the most zombies at the resort. So if I were to describe its borderline, it would be something like this. Bada bam, it's a pretty hastily drawn line, but it gives you a good idea because right up here is a military base, which is blocked off by a very high impassable fence. And right now, I need to get out of Quadrant 3. The other quadrant is going to be the military base right up here, with it looking something like this, with the last quadrant being the residential and more chill area, but still filled with zombies. So right now, my plan is to get out of the most dangerous part because I am woefully unprepared, whether by going through the bridge or finding some other way across. I'll be honest, I don't think there is. So I can make it into quadrant one, which is the most safe, setting up a base so I can hopefully raid the military base, get a hold of some weaponry and rain hell all across the island. So right now my plan goes as follows. Number one, we need to leave Quadrant 3, the one we're in currently. Number two, I want to establish a base in Quadrant 1. Number three, I want to raid Quadrant 2, the military base, in order to get weapons. And once I'm done with that, we can clear out all of the areas in order, starting with hopefully the military base, as it's going to be the easiest to clean up, as it's the smallest and most, I guess, reinforced. So no zombies are going to be able to path their way inside. And once we're done with that, we can go with the residential because it has, you know, less zombies, with the finale being the most zombie packed and dangerous area, the resort. So yeah, in my opinion, we got a pretty solid plan. Of course, the plan doesn't include the small things like finding a vehicle, barricading my home. This is just a loose little guideline for me to follow, and I can cross them out as soon as we get them done. So right now, we need to get the hell out of here. There's not much inside of these little, I guess you could call them bungalows. So right now, we just gotta head off in this direction, ignoring any zombies along the way to hopefully make it to Quadrant 2. And right now, it's 3 p.m., so we are only wasting time. Also, I really love when you pause the game and edit the map, it all updates in one go, so you just got, like, a massive, like, draw sign. <laughs> it's good that I did pause, though, because we didn't waste any time. Is there anything in this truck? Ooh, we got an empty gas can, a tote bag, a sack, and maybe a key? Oh my, we do have a key. Sadly, no gas, so this is useless for me. 
but I will remember it for later. Okay, let's keep her moving. I'm not going to be killing any zombies along the way. I can do that when I'm a bit more prepared. Oh, and one last thing before I forget. I will be keeping an eye out for any survivor homes across the way. And if I do see any, I will mark it down on my map to loot for later. Because survivor homes are going to be the main source of income aside from the military base, which is another big part of the challenge, which is figuring out how many resources I'll need to kill potentially thousands of zombies. You know, I said I wasn't going to kill zombies for the most part, but this was just too damn easy. And one less zombie now is one less zombie later. It also looks like I'm going to need to hop over the fence line and make it in through that way as well. Or I could just go around because that is what normal people do, not crazy unhinged survivors. Also, as you see right up there, that is the military base. You can tell, actually you can't tell from their attire, but you can tell from the barrack looking locations and the watchtowers. That is the place I want to enter next episode. Anyways, let's keep on moving down all the way to quadrant number one. Trying not to get lost along the way. And already we've met our first obstacle. As you see, the quadrant idea is a very good idea because of how locked off everything is. Because if you look right there, that fence line goes right into the water, which means nothing gets in or out of that military base. So yeah, we are going to have to take the long way down. <laughs> All the way to the bridge, it seems. So yeah, I guess it's going to be quite the jog. Hopefully pretty safe, though, because I am in the middle of the woods, though I am getting hungry and already anxious from lack of cigarettes, so let, 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 let's keep up the pace. Out of the way, chuckle nuts. Oh, is that a duffel bag? Oh, it is. Okay, never mind. I was about to run away, but that would be very nice for Claudette right now. Now, I'll be honest, we don't need a bag right now as we don't have a lot of items to store off, but I want to future-proof uh, Claudette's loot goblin ability. And if I come across a survivor home, it's going to make my life ten times easier. So let's train these losers around, hoping that we don't attract the rest of the zombies on the minimap and grab that bag real easily. Aw, oh, damn it, there goes my freaking saucepan. That's fine, though, because I've been through way worse during my challenges. Ain't that right? Yeah. Okay, I'll be honest, this is getting very, very, very bad for Claudette right now. The only good thing is that, uh, <laughs> the duffel bag lady did lose her leg abilities. The bad is that there are six zombies chasing me right now, the fact that I don't have a weapon, and two, the fact that both of the zombies are on the ground and very close to each other, making a leg bite very, very easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave. <laughs> I do not need to be fighting this fight right now. It's getting very laid out, and I am extremely worried that Claudette, even though I could probably kill all of them, is going to get exhausted before I even secure a single house. So we're gonna get the hell out of here. We're gonna learn to fold, and I'll be back with a gun. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that, zombies. I just, I need to focus on the goal ahead. And getting led astray by a duffel bag would be a very me way to die in this challenge and I don't want to die, believe it or not. So we're back on the old plan, following the river all the way down to the bridge. I also got to mention the fact of how many damn zombies are on this island, because even in the middle of the woods, like with nothing nearby, there are probably a few hundred zombies ready to ruin my life. Also, it looks like we have reached the bridge right up there. And on top of it, there are only three zombies chasing me right now. So what I'm going to do, instead of just running down the bridge haphazardly, is kill all three of these zombies, because three is a lot more manageable than six plus two crawlers. Now that the area is cleared, I can go ahead and loot the security booths right down there. There might be some good supplies inside, and more importantly, there's a chair to rest up in. And right now, my main problem is going to be the window. Actually, never mind. It, it isn't going to be a problem, because while my saucepan is broken, I can actually use the pen as a weapon and use that to smash down the window. So, oh my, I got so worried there that Claudette didn't use the pen for a second with her using the elbow, but we did use it. So, uh, we got any weapons in here? We got a single pair of scissors. Uh, wow, I was really expecting, you know, security guard stuff like 
a nightstick, a stun baton. Not a hole puncher, but I will take the eraser, the blue pen, and any red pens as well, because I can actually color code the quadrants. I'm also going to sit down for a minute, and we can go check out the other booth. Which, surprise, surprise, has more office supplies. That wasn't really worth it, but we do have a place to retreat to, just in case if things do hit the fan. It is 8.30pm, so as soon as I do find a home, I am gonna need to burglarize it and take it over for myself. We got a weapon in here? No, we got an empty bottle instead. Damn! I gotta say, things are not going too well for Claudia at all, especially the fact that the zombies are somehow evading her uh, ground pound stomps. So we're gonna do a loop-de-loop -loop on these two zombies and kill them the good old-fashioned way. At least we're doing it now while I'm not tired. Why did you use the pen, Claudette? Aw, oh, damn it. Now we have to deal with four of these bastards. Okay, okay. Let's just keep a positive attitude, avoid getting lunged, and we might be able to go check out some of the nearby buildings soon. Oh, I love fences so damn much. The game would be would 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 be a nightmare without them, really. <laughs> and would you look at that? We have homes. Very nice homes, by the way. So let's hope we find some weapons, maybe a bag, and some extra medical supplies inside. And hopefully not more zombies. And that's how you take out the trash. This house is now clean for the most part. So let's see what we have. I already have a better feeling about this place with the closets and wardrobes around the area. I don't think we're going to find just books here. So let's see if that's true or not. We have another frying pan, which I would have used for a weapon if it was higher in durability. Some extra food with a big old pot of stew on the stove. I'll put that in the oven right now to cook actually while I go loot. We got some more miscellaneous junk, a pillow with some shoes, foundation makeup and toothpaste, twine and wood glue. Wow, we are not getting too lucky with these house spawns today. And lastly, inside of this closet, we got a ball peen hammer. That right there, that's a serviceable weapon. So I'll count that as a win, actually. We'll wait for our soup to be done and I will go to sleep with tomorrow being the big day of finding our home. And while we are inside here, I can go ahead and scout out around using our map. And so I welcome you to day two. I spent most of the night to myself just reorganizing the map because I did find a blue and red pen. So if I check it right now, it looks a little bit more organized with the colors. Now, because I did snap my pen stabbing the zombie, we don't have the uh, color for quadrant one. But you can kind of tell how it's going to be now, with the red being the most dangerous and the blue being very cool because that's where all of the guns are. <laughs> yeah, right now we need to find ourselves a nice little home to make our base, though. We are here. I have not explored around the area and already... I kind of like the island base. I mean, I don't know how I'd get up there, but having it be a little bit out of the ways would be nice, especially with a, with a, with a densely packed population like this. So we can go ahead, cross out the quadrant three or our first step and work on establishing our base. We're going to go loot a few more homes down this street here, killing any zombies. And once we get enough supplies, I think we're going to go check that place out. And if worst comes to worse, I can just sleep here. So yeah, let's go do just that. And surprisingly, there is a lot less opposition than I was expecting. I mean, there is one idiot there, but it seems like we're going to be able to loot just fine. We have a nice VHS tape, which I will take. More canned food, a granola bar, some magazines, a leather jacket, and some bedside drugs. Honestly, par for the course for these homes, as I'm not ex- Ooh, never mind! That is eight cigarettes and a lighter right there. I was about to say par for the course for these homes, but that is a massive pick-me-up. It's not a bag, let's be honest, but having some cigarettes to alleviate our stress is so damn nice. And who knows? There might be something else nice in here. That is a weird place to put a plant, but I guess 
It would make the bathroom smell nice. We also got ourselves nothing in the closet, some fingerless gloves, which I will take right now for the extra cool factor, and some reading glasses. You know, for a house, that wasn't bad at all with the fishing supplies and very cool fingerless gloves. We've looted just about everything on this street, though, so let's go check out the little island place. Let's also go check out this massive garage area here. Why did I not check this out before? <laughs> I mean, this place literally has metal crates, which is the telltale sign of a lot of good melee weapons. I need to kill the zombies first, though, and then we'll loot second. Claudette is so back. Holy crap, that is a lot of dead zombies with some free duct tape and a screwdriver on top. But I don't really care about the screwdriver. What I care about is like an axe, so give me that please. Oh, okay, we got ourselves a generator. And in the crates we have a couple of magazines, a television, a fitness contraption, a fire extinguisher with two water bottles. This seems like the most random loot. A lighter with some carrot seeds. Ooh, 20 more cigarettes and an extra level of short blunt. A tent peg with an empty watering can. Five more zombies. And lastly, 20 more cigarettes. This warehouse sucks, and it kind of makes me worried that this island is gonna suck in general when it comes to supplies. But all that fosters is a creative kill mindset. And now that we have cleared out this warehouse, I think it's time we go check out this nice little island house here. If it even has a bridge, that is, it could just not be accessible, and I'm just kind of screwed on every way, shape, and form. But judging from the small driveway leading down there, or at least Woodland Path, I'm guessing that this is a location that I can go visit. And would you look at that? It is! Okay! This is gonna be a very cool base. I'm gonna go activate my mini-map, so... Okay, there's actually no zombies out here. This place is zombie-free. Wow, okay, I think this is gonna be Claudette's house for a little bit. We have a nice outhouse, a doghouse, some hay on the outside, and inside the actual place, we have... Please open the door, or window, sorry. A nice rustic interior with a overall zombie. I'm gonna go kill him outside as to not bloody up the interior. Bozo. We also have a very nice wood stove with a bunch of perishable and non-perishable food. A small stretcher bed, which leaves a little bit more desired, to be honest. Some bookcases, and overall, a very safe and quaint little location with a dock and beach. Holy crap, if this isn't a vacation home, I don't know what is. And I think this is going to be a perfect time to end the episode. We have our nice little cabin, and we can chill here for the rest of our time on this beautiful, beautiful place. So yeah, I'm going to end the episode here. Claudette has survived, let's see. One day, five hours, killing 77 zombies already with a ball-peen hammer as our favorite weapon. Next episode, we're gonna go move up to the military base and to get some real firepower. Anyways, if you guys have liked today's episode, be sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more. Anyways, I will see all of you later. Peace the hell out, everyone.